history is a init.pp, and init.pp tells you what to do with the rest of the manifest, and then each of these represents a particular um, uh, Perl-based development tool that I use or want to use in my daily work. Um, a little bit of this presentation is about the puppet manifest that uh, that makes building and rebuilding my uh, work environment possible and the rest is basically a really quick overview that will not fit into 20 minutes of what some of those tools are. Um, these are some of the other development tools that I uh, put on my local uh, development workstation uh, for people who uh, have to deal with CSS. I recommend that you take a look at uh, Compass and SAS. If you have to mess with uh, Drupal sites, you want to know about Drush. If you're respons responsible for packaging materials, uh, FPM, I believe they call it Frigging Package Manager, is available somewhere on GitHub. LibCloud is a Python-based tool that allows one to uh, launch and manage uh, cloud-based servers uh, from a local command line. Uh, and of course, Vagrant is become, becoming fairly popular a, a means to create local virtual machines so that you could create an isolated development environment. So these are some of the other tools beyond uh, uh, what's in my uh, Perl tool chain. Al Newkirk on the uh, Perl help channel on IRC uh, turned me on to some code that I adapted here. Whatever about this works came from Al, whatever bugs I introduced I'll take um, in uh, a puppet manifest that can then be called with certain arguments that will allow you to install uh, 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 Perl modules off of CPAN or off of wherever you're getting them. Um, and in this case, uh, it's all using CPANM under the hood. Um, so to get down to details, this is a little blow up of the specific manifest, the specific tool set that, that I use. Um, just a little bit about my uh, Puppet development environment. I'm working in a sandbox where I um, do my development. I've got a shell script that runs um, static uh, checks, lint checks, um, syntax checks to make sure I'm not pushing bad Puppet code into my uh, real into Etsy Puppet Modules Marcus, Marcus being the name of my machine and the name of this environment. And so um, that shell script deploys and then I'll run Puppet Agent-T as sudo or as root in order to deploy and test. Um, the uh, Puppet, the new versions of Puppet have recently reorganized and they are deprecating the use of Etsy Puppet modules environment name in favor of Etsy Puppet environments modules, no, environments module, uh, environment name modules as a place to uh, uh, store all of this. So if you're using a more recent version of uh, Puppet, uh, then this was developed on, you're gonna get a lot of uh, deprecation warnings. Um, so if you're running a real production environment, you probably want a real, what's called an external node classifier that figures out this is this node, it has this role, it needs these classes installed on it. Um, the Puppet Labs folks offer Hira, but there are also other third party ENCs available. Uh, but this is how I do it. Um, there's a modules path uh, command here in main that goes to environment um, right here and uh, down in my agent I define an environment in this case uh, MM Marcus um, in this case as well my agent is looking for a server called MM Marcus so this again is installed at local host on my local machine I pull it off of GitHub or wherever, but I install it on my local machine. I run my Puppet Master on my local machine and the agent on the local machine. Um, so this is not about building 
a whole network, a whole cluster uh, to run production services on. This is about building my local uh, workstation. Uh, from there, Puppet is going to look in manifest at site PP where I import nodes PP. I go to nodes PP and I have a, a line that reads if the node has this fully qualified domain name, go look at the Marcus init class to figure out what, what goes on. And then this is that Marcus init class that outlines each of the other classes that I want to include. This is what I call my poor man's ENC. Don't have to learn Hira to, to use it. It's pretty straightforward um, and it's all straight puppet. Uh, so getting down to Perl Toolchain, the subject of this talk, this is my init PP and you'll note that Perl Brew is commented out in favor of PLENV. Apparently they conflict and you can't run both on the same machine. But other than that, it's just a bunch of include statements and I, you know, install a single uh, package Perl doc and I make sure that there's a symbolic link from the cpan-m that's a part of my Pinto build back to user bin cpan-m which is in my path so I could find it on the command line. Um, so the rest of this talk is a quick overview of a handful of Perl development tools that uh, I have found helpful and hopefully maybe you will too. Um, my hat's off to David Wheeler who has figured out how to manage database changes. And if any of you have ever had to mess with that, it's a hair pulling experience. And you know, there, this doesn't deal with migrating data and upgrading, well, it can to some extent deal with upgrading and downgrading data from version to version, but it's particularly strong in managing changes to your schema. Um, when you run Skitch init and give it a project name, it will create uh, this uh, directory tree, a uh, skitch.conf, a skitch.plan, plus a deploy, revert, and verify um, folder. This is uh, the vocabulary that Skitch understands, add, bundle, check out, config, deploy, a lot of these uh, rebase. If you're familiar with um, Git, uh, there'll be some familiarity with the vocabulary and not too many surprises in what the, uh, the commands actually mean. Uh, in my Skitch directory, um, this is what it looks like, this as a current project. At this point I'll call it a recent project. But there is a distinct um, uh, directory for each, um, uh, each database engine that I support. I began developing this in SQLite 3, still do some of my testing in SQLite 3. I'm deploying to Postgres for this project. So each database engine will have a skitch.plan um, and uh, it will have that deploy, revert, and verify folder. The, um, uh, this is what I'm using to deploy the database. Um, uh, as sudo, I'm calling Perl with certain switches and certain library paths uh, and then calling skitch, deploy, an app mode. Um, mode is, and I'm flaking now on, because I'm about two projects later than when I did this. I'm flaking exactly on, I'm sorry? Could you make it larger, please? Hmm. Let me try that. Uh, that looks a little. Can I do a full screen, perhaps? F11. Any better, I hope? Um, let me try it here with F11. That's a little bit better. Um, so, but basically that sketch deploy rolls out whatever the latest version is of my um, database schema. Uh, this is what it looks like when you deploy. You um, it runs through each of the files that's in the deploy directory and tells you that it did its work okay or throws a bunch of uh, warnings or errors at you. Um, uh, 
Sketch allows you to write in native SQL, whatever SQL works for your database engine, whether it's Postgres or Oracle or whatever, um, you're able to write native SQL directly into your Sketch file. And um, so no need to review that. Uh, but the same thing happens with your revert, just dropping tables or, or re-altering tables to remove columns that got added or to remove constraints that got added. Uh, and also uh, verification. Um, and I, it never occurred to me what you, that you could verify these sorts of things without just going in and looking at it. But um, apparently, uh, David Wheeler turned me on to this uh, select from where false doesn't return any data, but it will throw errors if you've misspelled uh, column names, field names, or either in the test or in the, uh, uh, the, the database engine itself. Uh, this is what the verify output looks like. I spoke with David Wheeler and he's interested in patches that will turn this into tap output so that it becomes, uh, integrates better with our uh, continuous integration processes. Um, a lot of folks here are probably already familiar with Carton. Uh, so I probably don't need to uh, spend a lot of time with that, but um, essentially uh, after some setup, Carton install down here is all it takes to roll out whatever dependencies have been defined in a CPAN file uh, in the top level of your, uh, your build. Um, and so Carton uh, provides a way of uh, making it possible to enforce versions in your dependency chain at deployment that you used in development so that you don't have this situation of it worked in my environment, but. Um, Jeffrey Thaltheimer has a couple of uh, modules, uh, a couple of development tools that are a part of this. Um, and one of them is Perl Critic. And this is what the, um, the output looks like from uh, the test suite that uh, I'm doing. Um, this is what a, uh, my T static code analysis, it's a bunch of shell scripts. A couple of these are turned off because I wasn't ready to resolve the errors that they were throwing. Um, but essentially I'm running uh, Perl Critic, I'm handing it a couple of switches, I'm telling it to run over my lib script and T directory to identify any static code issues uh, in terms of uh, complexity, uh, whether it complies with Moose standards, uh, any obvious performance problems that I'm introducing, any obvious security problems. Perl Critic has, it began by looking at um, uh, Damien Conway's book, uh, Pearl Best Practices, and uh, it was an attempt to implement and enforce through static code analysis the best practices that had been um, outlined in Conway's book. But of course, you could turn anything on or off. In fact, um, in order to uh, deploy this, I wound up excluding a lot of the rules from certain of the um, you know, from the maintenance is what we're looking at here, the maintenance theme. I excluded a bunch of rules because I wanted to roll this out, um, but I didn't want to have to go back and fix all these issues in my code just to add this to my test suite. But now it's a part of my test suite and, and my continuous integration server uh, looks at these sorts of issues on every deployment. Um, so, uh, I was pretty sure that I was going to run out of time on this and at full screen I don't see my clock but uh, I see I have four minutes left. The first time I gave this presentation it ran about 45 minutes. We have 20 minutes here. Uh, I made some wild ass, excuse me, uh, some wild crazy uh, uh, promise that I would do a, a live demonstration. Actually, uh, just building Pinto is about a 40 minute process because there's a lot of uh, heavy math uh, and encryption modules that it depends on that are required. But uh, this is another module by Jeffrey Thaltheimer uh, and Pinto allows one to curate uh, a repository of Perl modules. You can um, do 
provide an authenticated interface. Uh, and so you could put your proprietary uh, internal development up there without exposing it to CPAN or to GitHub or wherever uh, it might be exposed to the eyes of the world. Um, and again, like CPAN-M, it allows you to uh, specify I want this version of this module uh, to build with, with my top level uh, project. And if you deploy from your Pinto repository, you always get exactly the same thing that you developed with, and it'll work in production. Uh, develop co cover to measure your test coverage. Uh, very useful tool. Um, I'm not seeing a lot of people indicating that they are not already familiar with it, so I'll keep rolling. Um, this is something that I read about in Perl Weekly uh, several months ago. Uh, it provides a web page and a REST service that interacts with your Perl code. You run your, uh, your Perl script through this HDB bugger and then you're able to set your browser to localhost some port I don't remember and all of a sudden you're able to step through it in a browser interface and introspect the uh, variables at a breakpoint and um, uh, it, it, it's a useful tool that I use occasionally. I, I usually go for the command line debugger but sometimes I'll reach for this. Uh, PLENV, uh, similar to Perl Brew for managing multiple versions of Perl on your, um, on your desktop and allowing you to switch back and forth from w one version of the binary to another uh, to check your code and decide whether you're ready to upgrade production to the next version of Perl. Uh, it'll also manage libraries. Uh, for each version of Perl uh, for your mo module dependency chain. Um, my test PP um, installs uh, uh, DB skip, uh, debugger skip, uh, test Perl critic progressive, test Perl critic, and test most. Test most for folks who are not already familiar, uh, the author went through and found the five most commonly used test modules in CPAN and he included them all in test most so that he can export all those methods uh, with one inclusion instead of these five. Um, Mojalicious, if you happen to build in that framework, somewhere in here there's also Catalyst, uh, brings in runtime and Devel and uh, makes it possible to do Catalyst development. Um, and that might be the end of my slideshow and I have uh, about six seconds left for questions. If there are any, I'd be happy to respond. Um, yes, sir. Uh, is your company like a puppet shop? Uh, I, I'm currently contracting in an office in New York. Um, back home, I have a, a company that does use Puppet to manage its infrastructure. Yes, sir. Uh, the company I'm contracting with is using Ansible. That was my very small exposure to Ansible. But I'm not involved in managing the Ansible stuff. Any others? Thank you.